Lord let me stop talking. It was so long ago. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, all right, we're going to get into this message. It's going to be a short one. Going to be short. Amen. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody say, the servant's heart. The servant's heart. The servant's heart. Amen. The servant's heart. I don't have a Christmas message today. Because I've just been dealing with us as people. And God has been just changing things, I feel like, in our heart. No matter how old you are, you can be edited. Yeah. Amen. It's time for us to go in and make some edits that should have been made many years ago. You got to be that sensitive to the Holy Ghost where God can tell you things. And you don't feel you are so mature in the faith that he's not talking to you. Amen. He's always talking. Amen. So, we want, we need a servant's heart. A true servant of God has these three things. If you are a true servant of God, you have a love for the truth. That means the truth don't run you off. You don't run from the truth. You embrace the truth. And embracing the truth don't mean you just heard it. But you're not just a hearer, but you are a doer of the truth. Amen. Amen. Come in here, get beat up by the word, and go make changes. That's, that's a true servant of God. Second thing, a love for God's people. If you're a true servant of God, you're going to love his people the way he loves them. Yeah, you don't hate nobody. You don't wish harm on anyone. You understand that when the body of Christ takes a hit, we all take a hit. And we all should feel it. And then a love and desire to, uh-oh, this is the one. Serve others. Amen. That's the big one. Serving others. That, I mean, how, it's in the word servant. How are you going to be a servant if you're looking to be served? Amen. Amen. That's what happened to the church. Preachers all over the world, all over the, they, they start preaching, they want to be served. They want somebody seeing after them, looking after them, doing this for them, doing that for them. They are preaching, somebody in their car going to get it washed. Yeah, just foolishness. And you're supposed to be the biggest servant in the church. Amen. Amen. And speaking of Pierre and Elena, I thank God for them. But I'm going to say something, and I'm going to rebuke the whole church. Ain't no need of Pierre being up here no two hours cleaning up after y'all. Everybody in this church is a servant. And if you got eyes, you can look around your seat before you leave. Your child and sat and pulled all the stuffing from under the seat because they do that. And you sat there so full of the Holy Ghost, you ain't paying no attention. God moving on you. You better let God move on you and save that seat for us. We need them seats. Pick up trash around you. Crumbs and candy and paper. and all. Why? Well, you ain't at the ball game. Amen. Pierre ought to be able to just sweep through these aisles in a few minutes. Because you're going to take care of it yourself. You don't, we don't have nobody cleaning up after us. Amen. We got 7,000 square feet next door. And it's looking real good over there. My mom asked, she said, oh, no, I know Pierre. I said, they sure not. That's going to be on a used and whoever's using it, clean it basis. Amen. We ain't going to hire nobody to clean at this church. Why would we do that when everybody in here keep their house clean? Don't you keep your, if you don't keep your house clean, you're just nasty. And we ain't paying for that either. I know we got guests. I'm sorry, guests, but 
I'm going in Christmas Eve. But I see them in there. They, they are so faithful cleaning up. And sometimes I look down, I'm like, now who did that? A whole chicken leg under the seat. Who did that? This ain't the game, man. This is, a, this is God's house. Amen. And everything in here is expensive. Everything in here is expensive. And I have a right to fuss about this. Amen. I don't keep my house like that. So you don't keep the church like that. Amen. Look at somebody say, clean up after yourself. That's all you got to do. When we dismiss you singing that song, that last song, get to looking around. Okay, is everything straight? In my area, I'm responsible. And we know where you sit and we got, see this right here. This, we call this tattletale. That's tattletale right there. Because he would tell on your tail. That camera. We see your children doing it. Amen. But you got to have a love and desire to serve others. Amen. That's why we are here. Ooh, do y'all remember this? Did I just take you back? We used to call this monkey blood. White people are like, now what? Because there's no white person call it that. I don't even know if white people could use this because this would stain you for years if you were white. Because <laughs> it stained us. Melanated folks, we got stained. And it would just remain. It's like, man, all that blood. Oh, that's not blood. That's monkey's blood. It's, it's different. <laughs> Y'all remember that? You had a sore or something, boy. You almost didn't want to tell your grandmama. Because the cure was more painful than the cause. Look, young folks looking like, what is that? Is that safe? No! And it used to look just, it was more on the outside than in the bottle. Dried up and caked up. You know the FDA banned it. They needed to. And you know, that was back when they had it in church and they purse, and they use it on anybody's kids. You, don't, don't you fall in front of them. Don't you fall in front of big mama. It don't matter who your real mama is. She's going to put that on you and it's going to burn. Yeah, it's 50% alcohol. <laughs> it's just a shot. Mercurichrome. Monkey blood. They named it monkey blood because it was hard to say. <laughs> Hard to pronounce that. You see it in the store. Ask for it. The truth hurts when it goes against our desires, wishes, and wants. Amen? Amen. Has the truth ever hurt anybody because it's going against something you wanted? But we must maintain a love for the truth in order to be made into the person God desires us to be. Amen. Amen. You spare the rod, you spoil the child. So if you, even if you spare the rod of correction spiritually, you will raise up a nation of what we have now. Entitled people. You can't tell them nothing. You can't correct them. You can't bring in it. You can't upset them at all. They have no tolerance, the Bible said, for the truth. Yeah, because they're entitled. Entitled because they weren't disciplined. Church wanted members, but the church didn't disciple. You can't just put up billboards and pass out brochures and invite people in. And you're not discipling them properly. Or you'll have a bunch of folks that don't have a love for the truth. So when the truth comes at them and stops what they want to do, they're upset at the preacher. Amen? So... We got to maintain a love for the truth in order to be made into the person God desires us to be. John 8 and 32 says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? 
make you free. So all these folks, well, I'm bound by this struggle. I'm still struggling. Y'all pray for me. Well, that's because you don't have a love for the truth because the Bible said the truth is going to make you free. There ought to be some deliverance if you had a love for the truth. You, Amen. Because the truth will deliver you. Ointments, monkey blood, usually burn when they are applied to open and unhealed wounds. What's that other one in the green box? The camphophonique. Ooh, my mama showed up that I'm okay. That was the one for like bug bites or something, right? You get bit by a bug. And I remember I was staying at this lady's house. Their house was so nasty, they roaches bit. <laughs> That's the roaches. You got evolution happening in your house. Insects are evolving. It's so nasty in here. Insects. <laughs> We can't even look them up in the encyclopedia. What you got in your house. They, they just an evolved. Biting roaches. As if the wings wasn't enough. Now they got wings and teeth. <laughs> yes. Yes. Biting roaches. One time, we were staying in this house. My daddy got this house, and they had this, uh, what's that in the backyard? A sauna. No, what is it? A jacuzzi. Now, you know, a jacuzzi, that's National Geographic, if you don't maintain it. So it was a jacuzzi. It didn't work or something, and my dad's like, I'll fix it, too. I'll fix it. You know, water standing in there, so you know. You have to call in the crocodile hunter at, uh, at that time. Cause it's, and so it was bugs that was living under that that would come in the house and they were so big they could raise their head up and look at you. Am I telling the truth? They, I'm like, daddy go fix that! I'm going off to college. I moved. I said, I'm going to college. I'm going off to school. They just raised like, what y'all doing? Uh, you know, we was here first. What y'all doing in our house? <laughs> water bugs, that's what they were. These water bugs. Oh, Lord, they got a neck. It's a bug with a neck. Teeth, neck. Why am I talking about this? That mercurochrome bring back all kinds. <laughs> But ointments usually burn when they are applied to open and unhealed wounds. This is what the truth, what the truth can feel like when it's applied to our scars and bruises. So when we have scars and bruises and issues in our lives that we grow up with, then when the truth comes, it stings like an ointment. The thing about the monkey blood or the mercurochrome is when they put it on there, it would create, the, 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 the job of it was to create a scab. Speed the scab process up because the scab kind of protects the open wound. Remember when you was young, you'd always rip the scab off? Hey, don't, because it's there helping you. And you rip it off. Another one grow back and you just... What's wrong with us? <laughs> but yeah, this is what the truth can feel like. So when the truth comes, you have to understand that it's going to burn. It's going to sting. It's going to be painful based on your issues. Because now there is a word coming at you going against the way you are. Amen. Amen. And that's never comfortable. Never. That's, it's never comfortable when the word comes for the way you are if you need to change. So then you got to make up your mind. Am I going to continue to allow this burning 
to be applied to my open wombs or whatever? Or am I just going to leave and go somewhere where the message feels better? Hebrews 4 and 12 says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and what? Hurts. All of these things hurt. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. Does piercing hurt? When you was a little kid and got your earring, it hurt. Piercing hurts. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow. And is a what? Discerner of the heart and intents. Discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's painful too. Because the preacher's up here preaching and you like, man, how did he know? He's all on my road. That's what they used to say. He's on my road. Yeah, because the word of God is like that, and it does it quickly. So you have to subject yourself to it and decide, nope, I planted myself here because I believe this is where God wants me to be. So when the word comes for me, I have to endure the pain of it. Because the pain is there as my cure. That's what they put this, this stuff on there for. It was to help it cure. When we learn to love the truth and endure the painful healing process, then we can truly be a servant of God. James 5 and 11 says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Job had to endure a painful process. Yeah. But what did God call Job? When the devil was going to and fro, he said, devil, what you doing? I'm just going to and fro. He said, have you considered my what? My what? A man that was rich and had everything, had servants himself. But he said, have you considered my servant, Job? If you want to be a servant. This is the way men act in 2023, just the gossiping. That's just, you know what. When God is changing our hearts, the enemy will usually cause us to look to the right and to the left to implicate someone else or be distracted by the actions of others. So once God comes for your heart, comes to try to make that change in you, you looking at other folks and what they need to change. Yeah, that's how the devil distracts you. He distracts you from your own process because you're worried about somebody else's process. Yeah, you all in other folks' business because your business needs to be gotten into. Amen. Look at somebody say it's a distraction. That's what the internet is, man. Whenever they're getting ready to do something, and I know they done turned something on and didn't tell us. They're going to distract you with somebody's business. <laughs> they do what they always do. They put some famous person's business out there, get everybody talking about that while they're changing mankind with something. <laughs> you know, I was talking about this ear thing. I was talking to somebody, and they told me, he was telling me that he had, it happened to him for like two weeks. And I talked to other people, they, everybody said, yeah, just all of a sudden I had this congestion. I had, you know, mucus, all this, whatever, but I didn't really have any sick symptoms or whatever, you know. And I was talking to my daughter, and she said, yeah, I lost my taste and smell. And I said, oh, but you know that's not COVID. That's, it's the flu now. The flu now can do what COVID used to do. But if you look up the effects of radiation poisoning, EMF, 5G, you know, remember the words you couldn't say in 2019 or 2020 or you get your page blocked? You couldn't say that word. Where was the first place they turned on 5G? Wuhan. 
China. And our bodies are trying to adjust to it. And so whenever they're doing something, you're going to get, you know, that mucus means that your, it's, your body's basically protecting you from the dangerous radiation. <laughs> oh, I, I can say it now. They won't, they're not going to block my page now. It's okay to say it now because it's the flu now. But back when I tried to say it, remember that? They put me in jail, internet jail. When I tried to say it during the pandemic. But now you can say it. Y'all, this world. But they always try to distract you with something. So while that's going on, so now they, you know, now they bringing all of the stuff against Trump and all the stuff they're doing now to just distract you while they're doing something else against God. Yes. And so whenever God is working on you, the devil will try to distract you with somebody else's business. Yeah. Romans 2 and 1 says, Therefore thou art what? An excusable old man, whoever thou art that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doing the same thing. In other words, get out of people's business because you ain't doing no better. Amen. Inexcusable. But the internet is just making everyone's business our business. It's a distraction. While God is working on us, we must strive to maintain a love for one another and not be what? Altered by the actions of others. People will be people. How many of you have grown to learn that people are going to be people? Whether you tell them to stop, tell them to go, whatever. they just going to be people. So people are going to be people. But when we are frustrated by our own process, we can get easily frustrated by others. It's a distraction. So when God is taking you through, the enemy wants you to look at somebody else's life and ignore the pain of your own process. You know, if we focused on what God wants to do with us, we won't be worried about it what he's doing with others. Amen? <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, doing what? I talked about this last week. Forbearing or putting up with one another in love. So lowliness and meekness. That means I'm not raising myself above anybody to the point to where I have license to talk about them. Amen. Amen. We must love God's people and realize that they are going through their own process to make them better as well. When we can mature to this understanding, then we can be true servants of God. You don't know what God is doing in other people's lives. Amen. So it's best to keep your mouth off of them. When they're in trouble, you pray for them. Galatians 6 and 4, let each one do what? Examine his own work. Worry about yourself. Then he can take pride in himself and not compare himself with someone else. The ultimate level of servanthood is when we can serve without notoriety, positions, or titles. That's the real servant. That's the real servant. Uh, sister, can you just, you know, in your area, just make sure everything is, is good uh, in your area each Sunday. Just, you know, just look around. Is it, okay, okay. Next Sunday, you got a badge on. Where did you get that badge? Oh, I printed it off the internet. Uh, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the owl monitor. It's ABC owl monitor. In glitter. Well, I think I'm asked, you know, so, so, so she's going to start doing it. Now you looking it up. I got this. This is. Folk need a title to do something. Need a title to do something. 
No, you don't understand. The ultimate level of servanthood is when you can serve without notoriety. When you can do things when no one else is around. Help people without recognition. Not have your name called. I was at, you know, in some churches when I was growing up, some churches I was playing for, whatever the case. And I mean, folks, they would all just be waiting for the pastor to say their name. Uh, Sister Joyce, I see you in that hat. <laughs> y'all know, y'all know that's real. Y'all know that's real. They used to manipulate the offering like that. Pastor would just lean, he just lean over the pulpit looking at what they hear. All right. Brother, I see you must have got a rage. You got to he walking here. <laughs> just everybody just getting manipulated. And do you know that's straight up against the story in the Bible of the lady with the two mites? Just straight up against it. Judging folks offering. And clothes and what they got. I see you got all the designers on today, brother. You got Louis shirt, Gucci pants. Just... <laughs> Yeah, and they just, you know, just proud of it, walking. No, man, come on. It ain't about that in here. <laughs> no. I just give my money when nobody's looking. Amen. That's the way it is at this church. Well, ain't nobody looking at you to see what you're giving. I just hope you're giving. I don't look you up. I haven't looked anybody up. We don't even have a ledger that shows us that, do we, Elder? We don't. We don't. We take the offering and put it in the bank. Yeah, because I don't, I'm not judging you by what you give. Amen. Amen. I don't even want that in this church. Folks with the money control the whole church. We went to this one church. I went to speak in Kansas City. Went to speak and one of the NFL, NFL player. I don't, he ain't even saved. And he had an earpiece walking around. Oh. He got an earpiece because he's in the NFL? <laughs> Is that a true story, baby? That's a true story. So I asked the pastor, I said, how he get an earpiece? Well, you know, he's in the NFL, so. Is he calling plays in the church? <laughs> they gonna tell him. Hey, he played for the Chiefs, man, so. <laughs> oh Lord, people though. Hey, Amen. You shouldn't need a position to do stuff in the church. Hey, Amen. You should be working just as hard as anybody in the church, in God's church. Hey, Amen. If, if all of these talented musicians can come in this church every Sunday and play these instruments, and then Monday they all go to work on their jobs, Amen. donating their time. You can pick up paper around your seat. And you don't need a title. Matthew 6 and 1. Well, when we do it for the Lord and not to be seen, we can truly be called servant. Matthew 6 and 1, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Now, I want to be rewarded. Amen. So I'm not doing it so people can see me. I don't need the neighborhood to hear me praying in my prayer closet. Oh, Lord. Hey, hey. Oh, the, the, the Rev's house, he must be seeking God. <laughs> this is why it's so important to overcome our issues and endure our process so that the desire for notoriety can be worked out of us we should never use God as an opportunity to get praise for ourselves don't use God amen Wives, tell your husband you love him and tell him he's doing a good job. 
Make him feel good about himself and he won't be going out trying to get praise anywhere else. Uh-oh. Amen. Amen. See, amen. You want to be a servant of the Lord and you can't serve your husband. Serve him. Look at the women. Okay, now when we get into what the men's supposed to do, I'm not getting to that. Serve him. Serve him. Serve him. Yeah, then you be a good servant in the church. Don't be giving the church. Don't be giving the church your husband's time. Uh-oh. Yeah. Serve that man. Wives love, I mean, men love your wives. Amen. If she feel loved by you, then she ain't got to pull all them Instagram pictures up. That's your wife. Why your wife online like that? You married to her. Showing all that online. Can I preach in here? I'm going to preach. This is the truth. Yeah, show her some love. Tell her she look good and she won't be trying to get it. Comments telling her that. Some old bots. I'm preaching a 2023 message right before it ends. Yeah. But when you do those things at home and that servant attitude, when you have that submission at home, then it's easy for it to come into the church. It's easy for it. Amen. I'm going to use Amory. I know I can. She cooks for me every Sunday. She makes great food. But I know she ain't cooking for me no more than she's cooking for Elder. I done seen his handprints on my plates. He done took something off. No, I'll just play. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute, baby. Nah, that's mine. I, I need that. <laughs> and she'll give it to him. She serves him at home. That's why her attitude is like that in here. Amen. Some of y'all wondering why we don't ask you to do stuff in here because your attitude's not right. You're not going to do it for the right reason. But that right reason starts at home. Well, that's the methylator, I told you. That's the monkey blood. That, that, that sting you just felt. It's monkey blood. It's ointment. That's what the word is. Let the word correct you today. Amen? Don't think I'm talking about somebody else. I'm talking about you. Whoever's thinking I'm talking about somebody else, I'm talking about you. I promise. Let me go back to the ointment slide. Yeah. We should never use God as an opportunity to get praise for ourselves. Matthew 23 and 12. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be what? Exalted. Oh, I'm going over my time. I was it's supposed to have been short. When we are lifted up in pride, we will be cast down in shame. Amen. Cast down in shame. So it's best to get all the neediness, greediness, and affectation worked out of our hearts so that we can be true servants and serve in ministry for the right reasons. Amen. Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Don't use your call in here for an occasion to the flesh. But by love, do what? Serve one another. Summary. Yeah, it was a good message. It stings, yes. Because you need a servant's heart. And you need to practice that at home. Don't let the internet gas you up and make you think you somebody. I'm a melanated queen. I don't have to submit to nobody. Well, you're going to be melanated by yourself. Amen. Don't you stumble on them pages and start acting like that. That's not real. Amen. The word of God is real. So he said, if you lift yourself up, you will be humbled. 
brought down low. Queen. <laughs> the devil seeks to magnify our issues to the point of feeling entitled to the things we think will make us better. Many in the church began to use the church platform for fame, notoriety, and accolades. The church? Really? You're going to use the church for fame? You know, they use church for everything now. Yeah, yeah. You want to be a rock star? Use the church, sing gospel songs, and get up and shake your tail. Yeah. Hang out with the rich and famous celebrities. All of that. They're doing all of it now in the name of the church. They feel they deserve commendations because of what they went through. So many today will do any and everything for money, fame, and validation from the world. But it's impossible to be a true servant when you are desiring to be served. Yeah, when you're trying to make up for childhood trauma and all that happened to you and all that entitlement and all of that, it's impossible for you to serve anyone. Because you're looking to be served. It's always about you. Denying ourselves is the prerequisite that Christ requires of us when we come to him. We must be willing to deny ourselves what? Fame, money, and certain accolades in order to truly follow him. Because if we don't, we will end up using him in our plight to be something in the eyes of others. You know, some things you just have to turn down. Yeah. Deny yourself the fame, the money, and accolades so you can truly follow the Lord. We must keep a servant's heart and never look to be served or praised by others. Although it's good when people recognize us, commend us, and celebrate us, this cannot be the goal. It's good when they have... Uh, it's good. It's good when you get commended. It's good when somebody say you did a good job. All of those things, but you don't do the job for that. Amen. Can't be the goal. When we seek these things, we are seeking celebrity status, which is never of God, but of the world. I said that on Instagram this morning. The only example of somebody being a superstar in the, in the Bible was Lucifer. He's the only one that wanted to exalt his stars above the stars of God and be a celebrity and be celebrated. Have a congregation, mount the congregation of people clapping for him and cheering and saying his name. Yeah. Man, if the only example of what you're doing is Satan, I'm doing something else. Amen, I'm doing something else. <laughs> when we seek these things, we are seeking celebrity status. The world lifts up their own only to tear them back down. But we that belong to God should always do each and everything to the glory and honor of God. Never expecting to be praised or exalted for it. This is a true servant's heart. Amen? Somebody didn't like this message. I wish you had talked about Christmas, Pastor. Because now I'm burning. The ointment is burning me. Good! Let it burn that self off of you. Amen. At the end of the year, sometimes we just got too much self going on. We've catered to ourselves all year. Now it's time. To let the truth burn it up. Amen. So we can humble ourselves and get back to where we're supposed to be. Mark 4, 10 and 42 says, And Jesus made them come to him and he said to them, You see that those who are made rulers over the Gentiles are lords over them. And their great ones have authority over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever has a desire to become great among you. Let him what? Let him be your servant. And whoever has a desire to be first among you, let him be servant of all. For truly the Son of Man did not come 
to have servants, but to be a servant and to give his life for the salvation of men. Everyone stand. Yeah, you want to be like Jesus? What would Jesus do? Deny yourself. Be a servant. Serve others. Serve others. I'm just going to pray with you for that. Just a servant. God, give me the servant's heart. And it's, you know, this is a picture of a bowl with a towel representing Jesus doing the foot washing and Jesus washing his disciples' feet. At a lot of churches, you know, people want to, where we going to have foot washing? We're going to have foot washing. But it's not necessarily about washing the feet. It's the posture. That posture has to carry over in more places than just the feet washing. You can wash people's feet and still, still not be humble. You can be washing feet because the Bible told you to instead of being humble. This is about humbling yourself to where you can be a true servant of the Most High God. So if you need help with that, come on up. I'm going to pray with you. Father, I just need to deny myself. I want the servant's heart again. I want to serve the church. I want to serve your people. I want to serve my husband, my wife. I want to serve. I want a servant's heart. I just pray all the time for God to just keep me sensitive. Keep me sensitive, Lord. Sensitive to your people. Sensitive to what they're going through and all of the things that are happening. I want that sensitivity. That servant's heart. Where I'm not looking to be served. I'm not looking to be noticed. I'm not looking to have my name called. I'm not looking to be before people and for them to be yelling my name, screaming my name, people thinking I'm something, they think I'm this, I'm that. No, that's not a servant. I want to truly be a servant of God. I want to hear what God is saying in private. I want him to move upon me privately. I want to feel him when I'm in the secret place. Those are the things I want. I don't need accolades before people. I want a true servant's heart. And some of these messages and the year to come, they're going to sting. It's going to sting, man. It's gonna, you're going to go home and you sure this the right church? You've been here 10 years. You sure this the right church? <laughs> sometimes it, it gets rough. Man, that word is coming. It's going to sting. It's going to burn. But it's burning Sting in an open wound. That means that something was already wrong. And God is just trying to fix it. Anyone else? Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, Father God, for your son coming, being born of a virgin, coming to live a life as a man, but being God in the flesh, to show us how to live. Most importantly, show us how to be a servant, how to serve others, how to put what we want aside for the needs of others, how to put our desires and wants second to the desires and needs of others. Father God, thank you for that example of being a true servant that gave your life for our sins and our salvation. And I pray right now, Lord, that you would just fix our hearts towards servanthood. Make us servants. Father God, fix our hearts. Lord, fix our issues. Fix the things that cause us to want notoriety. Fix the things that cause us to want to be seen to be heard, to be known. Fix the things, Father, that cause us to want credit, Father God, for things and want accolades for things and want just for people to 
know who we are. Father God, fix those issues. Let this word come. Cover them and heal them, Father God, so that we can do things for no notoriety. No one has to know. We can serve your people. We can serve this church. We can serve our husbands, our wives. We can serve our children. We can serve others without desiring anything in return. Fix it for us, Lord. Give us that servant's heart. Let 2024 be the year that our heart is turned completely over to servanthood. Let us feel what you feel. Let us see what you see. And let us do what you would do in every situation. We pray for that and we ask for that. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. You know, it's a little personal, but I'm going to tell you. So this week, you know, I was just getting bombarded my email inbox everything just bombarded by stuff that's going on in the news with p diddy and all of that stuff i'm sure y'all probably seen it heard it so people i hadn't talked to in 20 years elder preachers hit me up you said this you said that oh it just it's this is happening this happened this happening i was like yeah yeah you know and i cracked a few jokes with a couple of people and and then at night i was just kind of feeling weird i was like feel weird. I was like, God, I said, you know, if I do something wrong, whatever, I said, I said, God, how do you feel about all of this? I said, you know, I, I want to feel what you feel about this. And that next day, I woke up, and Elder, I can't even describe the sorrow that came up on me. I couldn't stop crying. I was uncontrollably just weeping, like it was just, and I felt so terrible and God said that's how this is making me feel can you cry with me is what the Lord said don't laugh can you cry with me can you feel what I feel and that's what we all we all have to get to that point to where yeah, you know, we, 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 we have fun and different things, but some things, we got to feel what he feels. We got to see it the way he sees it. And it's got to hurt us the way it hurts him. If we're going to have the servant's heart. And that's what I want. I want to feel what he feels. I want his heart. So y'all be in prayer for the potter's house and all of that. Man, don't, don't just... That's not, you know, that's not what I do ministry for. I don't do, I don't say things and put things out there to tear people down. I put them out there so people won't follow it. But as far as men and people and different things like that, man, this stuff hurts God. It hurts him to see it. And it should hurt us too. It should hurt us all. It should hurt us all. Oh, it's sad. And so we want to be in prayer for people. We don't want people to just lose all sensitivity to the church and who God is and all that because the world can spin it and manipulate it and make jokes and make fun and make sport and just totally make people insensitive to what they really need. Jesus is the answer for this world and it don't need to be trivialized it don't need to be joked about he needs to be kept the answer amen hug somebody and tell them God's given me a servant's heart servant's heart a servant's heart on your way to your seats this is what we want. We want a servant's heart. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.